want you to know that you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. This is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Hello there, this is Patrick Quinn. I'm coming to you live, bringing you faith moments, um, a moment and a time of activating your faith in God through the understanding of the Word of God. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you for another blessed day, another blessed month the month of delivery the month of spiritual birth we are grateful to you and thank you for all that you have done none of me all of you holy spirit take over now sit and take your hands off god's people from understanding god's word for them to fulfilling the purpose for which they have been born in glorifying the name of god in jesus name amen and amen. Beloved, it's good to uh, be with you again, wherever you are under the sound of my voice. A um, couple of months now, we've been journeying on the, uh, talk, um, talking about the person of the Holy Spirit. Talking about the person of the Holy Spirit. The, the third personality of the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and now the Holy Spirit. We cannot talk enough of the Holy Spirit because He lives in us and He dwells with us in this dispensation of uh, God's grace. All right. Now, I'll be um, talking to you in this series concerning the graces of God. I term it the graces of the Holy Spirit. The graces of the Holy Spirit. Now, there are only three things that will last into eternity. There are only three things that is going to last into eternity. That has to do with your personal daily life and practical living. Beloved, I believe in practical Christianity. I believe in practical Christianity. What I can, I can see the manifestation of what I believe. And that is what has helped me through all my life till now. Because I have to believe the God in whom I serve and all the attributes of Him. Are you listening? And I believe that God wants to see his children um, with this understanding. And so there are three things that I'll be speaking to you concerning the graces of God. I call the graces of God. This we are living in the time of the, this grace dispensation. However, the person who is our helper have this attribute. And um, this has to do with our, our daily life and living. And so, we'll be, um, talk, I'll be talking to you concerning um, these three areas. In the area of uh, faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love through the person of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? Now, it's like how does the Holy Spirit has to do with this? Well, we're going to see by the time we end up in this series. In this in this month are you listening so uh, do me a favor tag somebody all your friends and uh, loved ones tag a friend invite somebody share this broadcast with me and uh, please let it um, go as far as it can go because uh, this is very important um, you, I may not be in your pulpit uh, to preach to you on this Sunday and this is the time you can get now wherever you are if you miss this program, go to the um, the YouTube, okay? Go to the YouTube and download it for your hearing. I'm going to be very, very brief, okay? Now, I am not um, a fan of, um, you know, claim and receive. Claim and receive. I am, I am more of a practical understanding person of my Christian life. I got to see the practicality of who God is. Is, says and what he does and I have been experiencing that throughout all my life I see the tangibility of uh, what God has promised I see it and this is what I believe that it makes one very strong and one very powerful 
um, and do not throw in the towel irrespective of the challenges of life that it may come because in this life you're going to go through some challenges now they are evil people and they are evil spirits or right, manifesting all over the place but when you have the understanding okay the, like I always always tell you this beloved understanding will keep you understanding will keep you and so it doesn't matter who's running faster than you know than you uh, this race this particular race is not for the swift <laughs> are you listening this particular race is not for the swift um, and so just take your time understand be solid be solid Psalms 11 verse 3 says if the foundation is destroyed what can the righteous do if your foundation is destroyed in other words if you don't build on a solid foundation the building is going to collapse in just a matter of time so it doesn't matter who's running ahead of you and who is all over the place and and all all over i mean all that it, it just doesn't matter i have seen men and women who have stood the test of times by standing on the one solid foundation and one understanding of the practical aspect of our Christian life and they are still standing today not going to be mentioning names all over the place but if you are a believer and have been around for some time just just stay just put your eyes on there you see certain people who have stood the test of times and still standing strong why because of the understanding nothing moves them nothing changes are you listening you come to the place where you know that you know that you know so it doesn't matter what kind of new gospel is coming up and uh, and all over the place and everybody's jumping and shouting for it don't matter you just know that you just know because you see the clouds move the clouds move are you listening the clouds move so don't worry yourself about it. the cloud that is moving right now that you know, you just just take your time and have an understanding in the Word of God, because beloved, poor understanding of the Word of God would lead to your destruction, and that is why you need a person of the Holy Spirit to help you understand. Because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit knows the the things of God, and even the deep things of God. Are you listening? And in this dispensation, this is the time of the Holy Spirit operating in this dispensation of grace. So if you don't understand who he is and what he is here to do, you're going to be missing out a lot and still call yourself a Christian. Are you listening to me? So the Holy Spirit is here, beloved, in helping us in all these areas of our life. Now, so I want to talk to you about these three, um, these three important um, eternal qualities of the Spirit. I want to talk to you about these three eternal qualities of of the Holy Spirit and that is faith and that is hope and love and so go with me now go with me now grab your Bible if you don't have it if you just have um, um, your notepad and what have you just take some notes now and check it out later it's going to be a blessing to you beloved my my interest in your life is to for you to see for me to see that you have an understanding of the Word of God and therefore you are living your daily life that practical life with understanding are you listening so that you don't begin to shake and begin to um, you know scream out and throw in the towel because it's like man you know this is this is it no it's not over yet it's not over until it's over are you listening to me it's not over until it's over see sometimes you need to learn some things are you listening jesus said something in the other day um in matthew the 12th chapter the 43rd verse i believe is that when the unclean spirit leaves he goes out and comes back again some things we, we need to learn some things are you listening it goes and come back. it's not over don't ever think it's over it's only over when the they, you know, you've been put in the six feet down there and you are no longer on the face of this earth. That's when it's over. But as long as you're on this earth, it's not over yet. I'm going to come back at you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to come back. So if you think it's over, well, think, just think again. 
And that is the attitude of Satan who is in charge of this atmospheric world. And that got to be your attitude as well concerning the word of God for your life. That the fact that you are not seeing it right now does not mean it doesn't work. Are you listening? Apply it every day. Apply it every day. Okay, when you sow, when you sow a seed of whatever fruit it may be, beloved, it doesn't grow just overnight. Anything that grows overnight, it's very scary because it's just a matter of time that it's just going to collapse on your head. Are you listening to me? And so take your time. Don't worry. Just have an understanding that this is an everyday lifestyle. Everyday lifestyle that you're going to walk in it. You're going to swim in it. You're going to eat in it. You're going to sleep in it. You're going to talk in it. Are you listening? Seasons and, and times changes. But what you got doesn't change. Remember the Bible says that everything passes away by the word of God will not. Why? Because the word of God is, is established. It is written. That's what Jesus told Satan in, you know, in, the, in, the, um, uh, in, the, in the wilderness, in the mountains. It is written. And what is written, beloved, is written. Hallelujah. You can't change what is written. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So you would have to have that positive attitude that what is written is written. The doctors is telling you something else, but you know what is written. By his stripes you are here. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. By his stripes you are here. I'm here. Amen. Now I may not I may not have a million dollars right in my in my account right now, but it don't mean that I'm poor. Glory be to God. Boy, his promises say that I'm rich and not poor. Glory be to God. And that's what I receive. I receive what God is giving me. I don't receive the report of the devil. I receive, I receive the promises of God. Praise God. Amen. So that got to be your attitude. And that is for your practical daily life and living. And that's going to keep you to go as long as you, you can go. Amen. Are you listening to me? So we're going to start with the area of faith. This are the, like I said, these are the, the, uh, the, uh, the graces of the Spirit. The graces of the Holy Spirit. The eternal qualities of of the Holy Spirit uh, that are with us forever. Faith, hope, and love. I'm going to talk to you about those three areas. All right, so let's look at the three graces of the Holy Spirit, starting from faith. All right, faith um, is a growing relationship with God. Our faith is, is a growing relationship with God. Every day we need to activate our faith in the things of God and even in our personal life. Whatever God has promised us for the day, whatever God has promised us, we have to activate our faith and receive it. Glory be to God. Amen. If we don't do that, the world, okay, the spirit of error will come in and present to you the, the, the things of the world. Now remember that Jesus says in John chapter 14, the, the 17 verse, that, that this world do not know the Holy Spirit. All right, then the world don't know the Holy Spirit. So if the world does not know the Holy Spirit, then what, what the Holy Spirit has to offer, the world cannot receive. But you do. Praise God. Are you listening? You do. And so um, <clears throat> you have to um, understand this and then know how to walk your life on daily basis. A vi this is a vi vital ingredient of our fellowship with Him. Faith. All right. Now, first, first <clears throat> go with me to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews, um, the 11th chapter. All right, faith. Faith is a way to God. Faith is the way to God. Faith is the way to God. <clears throat> and I'm giving you some practical scriptures. Now we're going to get, I'm going to load you with a lot of scriptures. And uh, because you got to know it. You have to know it if you don't have these ingredients in your life. Beloved, this challenge times we are living in, you're not going to survive. You're not going to survive. Are you listening to me? We, you're not going to survive. So it's very important for you to get that. Now, Hebrews 11, the sixth chapter, what does it say? That without faith, it's impossible for you to please God. And that those who who come to God, my first believe that God is, and He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So faith is the way to God. Faith is the way to God. Number one, faith is the way to God. All right. Now, how do you get faith? 
Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. And beloved, these are the attributes of the Holy Spirit. How do you receive the Holy Spirit? you got to receive the Holy Spirit by faith. Glory be to God. Are you listening to me? you got to receive the Holy Spirit by faith. I mean, over this past week, I was getting, you know, um, some messages as to the Holy Spirit. Now, it's so, it's interesting that um, um, uh, a lot of believers have not really, um, you know, like um, in the days of, um, uh, of uh, the Ephesus, you know, a lot of the believers didn't know nothing about the Holy Spirit. Paul had to talk to them about the Holy Spirit. And in this modern Christian lifetime, a lot of people don't know about the Holy Spirit too. A lot of people don't know about the Holy Spirit. And so uh, it's, 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 um, it's not surprising that we are not engaging Him the way we ought to engage Him in every area of, areas of our lives. And therefore we, you know, we, we tend to be, to be getting all these messages that, you know, it, it, it stirs up our emotions and by end of the day, there's no tangi tangibility in our practical Christian life. We don't have nothing to show for. Are you listening to me? And whatever we even grab today, it doesn't last in our hands. Why? Because we are not solid in our understanding of who the Holy Spirit is in our present dispensation. And so it's very important for you to understand that. Are you listening? And so the Holy Spirit, yes, a lot of people don't know nothing about that. I'm talking about believers, not even unbelievers. Like in the days of Ephesus, I says. All right. And so this is why the, we, um, that I believe the Lord has not, you know, left me in this area to talk to you about and introduce to you who the Holy Spirit is and what he's doing in our lives. And so, again, faith comes by hearing Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. Or right, go with me to Romans 10, 17. Let's, let's see some scriptures. Glory be to God. Amen. It's very important that we, we uh, get some scriptures here. Now, this platform, again, is a teaching platform. I'm not preaching to, um, you know, be yelling at you. Sometimes I may get excited about something and go out of my, out of my mind. Praise God. But that don't mean that, uh, you know, I'm going to be um, yelling and, and that screaming and that kind of stuff. No, I, because you see, you need to understand. You need to hear and listen. You need to hear and listen or you need to listen and hear. Are you listening to me? So it's very important for, for you to understand that. Okay, <clears throat> now watch this now. Verse 10 says, okay, for with the heart, <clears throat> for with the heart, uh, verse 10 of Romans, Romans chapter 10, verse 10. It says, for with the heart one believes to righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Are you listening? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. So it's very important for you to hear <clears throat> the word of God. Now look at verse 17. Was that what I said? Verse 17. All right. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You see the, the word hearing two times. Twice it said. <clears throat> Twice said, once heard. <laughs> Twice spoken, once heard. All right. So then, faith comes by hearing. That's number one. You hear that? We hear that word again. Hearing, faith comes by hearing. And number two, and hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. So for for you to um, have your faith come alive, you must be hearing the word of God. And what does the word of God says? The word of God says that. You are above and not beneath. Glory be to God. The word of God is full of promises of God for your everyday life. Your everyday life. God has given you promises for your everyday life. I mean, there are promises for your business, promises of God for your education, for your marriage, for your family, uh, for your finances. Hallelujah. Anything that governs your life, anything that has to do with your life, there are, the God, God has given you promises in those areas. And you need to find that and begin to take it and take it. I was listening to um, <clears throat> um, uh, this brother of God, this man of God, uh, who was talking about last week, this past weekend, and that uh, when he was diagnosed with, with cancer, 
uh, that he decided, okay, that he's going to set every, every uh, message, every promises of God concerning healing. And um, I mean, he grabbed them and all he has to do is just take them, eat them, drink them, sleep them, listen to them, bath them all the time. Every, I mean, constantly. Now, this is a practical way of living. This is a practical lifestyle. Are you listening? He didn't. He didn't wait for anybody to preach to him about you know um, about his his sickness or his diagnosis. He decided upon himself. Now, nah, listen. I'm. This is what the doctors I'm, are saying. I don't believe what the doctors are, uh, are saying. I'm saying. I'm even hearing him this morning. So like, sometimes you gotta just choke them up and says, "Now, I am not sick." <laughs> I was just laughing. Amen. Yeah, the doctors are going to, listen, I told you, I think last week, uh, last month or last two months or so, I told you what the doctors were telling me, diagnose, diagnosing me with this thing here. And I said, hey, it's not me. It's not going to happen. It's not me. I want to leave the hospital, go home. And, uh, he, you know, he was uh, serious talking about, well, we are called a security if you want to leave this place and I'll have you. I said, oh, really? And they, they had to um, schedule a surgery on me. I said, no, ain't no surgery going, no, no metal of man is going to touch my body. I told Joyce, I said, hey, sweetheart, just get in the car and get me a communion. Let me take the body of God, of Christ and his blood and uh, we're going to see what happened the next, the next morning. Well, that was my faith in action. Are you listening to me? And I'm sitting down here, you know, talking to you and no, no instrument touched my body. Glory be to God. Well, you know, you have to understand this thing here that, beloved, this is a practical life we're not we we're talking about here are you listening to me because in this life here in this earth in this dispensation if you don't understand the word of god and and utilize it in every area of your life you're going to i'm telling you you're going to be flawed by the wiles of the enemy are you listening to me you're going to be, i'm telling you and and it has nothing to do with your christianity a Christian would not understand it. And that is why I keep saying that it's very important for you to have the Holy Spirit with you, in you. Because those are that's a promise Jesus gave. That when the Holy Spirit comes, John chapter 14 and 16, he says that he's going to pray the Father. That's before he left. That he prayed the Father to send you and me and not the helper. And the 17 says that the world don't know him. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to dwell with you and me and he's going to be in us. And so if you don't know the Holy Spirit, you must, you know, but be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You must receive his baptism. Hallelujah. And this is what you have to do. You got to listen. The Holy Spirit is our helper. I don't know who's helping you in whichever area of your life, but I'm getting all the help I need from the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. Amen. Because I mean, Deception when you want to put your 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 trust and 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 hope in man. Bible said that the armor of flesh will fail you. The armor of flesh will fail you. How many times have you failed yourself? Much more try to rely and depend on somebody. They're gonna fail you because if they can't help you themselves, they can help you either. But the Holy Spirit is our helper. That's who He is. Praise God. Are you listening? That's who He is. It's 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 like a you know a car. A car is to take you from one point A to point B. A car cannot give you food. Are you listening? A car cannot cannot um, you know do any other things for you. I mean, a car would just take you from point A to point B, and that's who the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our helper, helper in every area of your life. Praise God. And so it's very important that we understand this. Are you listening? So now we're talking about the three. Um, <clears throat> graces of the Holy Spirit and today we're starting with the 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 area of faith it's faith hope and love okay those are the eternal things those are the 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 the, um, the the qualities of the Holy Spirit now so how do you get faith now faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God and hearing and hear and hear you see the word hearing is mentioned twice in other words, you must hear and hear and hear and hear again the word of God. The word of God. Now, find the area in which you have the need or in which you are facing whatever it may be. And um, hear it, hear it, hear it, hear it, and hear it again. 
The more you hear it, the more it becomes who you are. Are you listening to me? Amen. I told her, listen, I told the nurses and all that. I said, I am not sick. I am not going to have this surgery done on me. You guys may have seen something else, but that's not what I believe God has seen me. Glory be to God. While well, I'm sitting down here, and that ain't happened. So you have to understand that. Faith. <clears throat> All right. Now, faith um, is expressed in action. Faith is expressed in action. And it corresponds with what I just told you. The action that you are taking based on your belief. Take action on what you have come to believe. What is faith? Faith is belief and trust. In who? In God. In God. In God. In God. You see that faith comes by hearing hearing what? The word of God. Faith comes by hearing what? The word of God. And so your 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 belief and trust in God's word will keep you to succeed, will keep you to victory. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. And so faith um, express itself um, in action. James chapter 2 verse 17 James chapter 2 verse 17 to 20 you're gonna see that they're going to read it I'm gonna be very really, really brief with you this time because I think I, I took my time and went through a lot with you this past month and I'm gonna speed up a little bit concerning certain areas so that we can cover a lot now beloved I can stay on this platform and speak the rest of the year if you don't take an action you're not going to see what I'm saying because I'm not speaking out of my head I'm speaking according to the Word of God and so if you don't grab the Word of God and let it work for you you're not going to see it and therefore you will you can go anywhere and let them tell you all the nice good stuff what tickles your funny let you sh shout praise the Lord jump and all that by the end of the day when you are facing adversity and the challenges of this world, you will not have any platform to stand on it. Are you listening to me? You won't have nothing. When your foundation is destroyed, you can be the righteousness of God in Christ, but there's nothing you can do about it. You have to understand that. I'm talking wisdom to somebody. All right? Okay, good. Faith is the way to live in Christ. Faith is the way to we live a Christ-like life. Second Corinthians five seven. Second Corinthians five seven. What does it says? For we live by faith and not by sight. Let's go there. Second Corinthians. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seven. That is Christian Faith Ministry, our church. That is our logo our motto <laughs> all right second corinthians mm. go with me to second corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 for we walk by faith not by sight for we walk by faith not by sight we walk by faith now where are you walking you walking on the face of this earth by faith and not by sight not by the sight of the things of the world, not by sight of the, the 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 occurrences and the issues of this world, which is so much crazy. Jesus says this world is full of tribulations, but he says you take heart. Why? Because I have overcome them. For who? For you. I have overcome them for you. And so it is very important that we understand this. For we walk by faith. Do you walk by faith? Are you walking by faith this month? Are you walking by faith this day? Are you walking by faith this, this week? Have you made your mind, I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight? Are you listening? And so when you do that in the Holy Spirit, listen, the Holy Spirit is not here, you know, to, to, um, 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 <clears throat> to just be watching you crying. And He's here to help you. He's our helper. Now we need to activate our faith in God. Remember, Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it's impossible for you to please God. It's absolutely impossible. Amen. It's impossible. And so, um, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, okay, faith is the way we live a Christ-like life. For we walk 
by faith and not by sight. We believe. We believe. We believe. We believe the promises of God. The promises of God, the Bible says they are yea and amen. Are you listening? They are yea and amen. All over us, what God has said, it is. That's it. Are you listening? What God has said, that's it. Okay. So now, faith, um, we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith is how to be free of worry. Faith is the way to be free from worry. Faith is the way to be free. Oh God, I can't repeat this enough. Faith is the way to be free from worry. Jesus always talk about ye of little faith. And Jesus says, do not worry about, about what you're going to eat. What are you going to wear? Where are you going to sleep? Those are the practical everyday life of you and me. Do we eat every day? Do we wear every day? Do we sleep some every day? Jesus said, don't worry about it. And beloved, I'm telling you, listen, I'm a witness to this, this, this um, um, uh, promises Jesus gave. I'm a witness to it. I'm telling you, I, if, I, if I begin to tell you some things, you will not believe. But I've come to that place. I don't worry about what I'm going to eat, wear, or sleep. No. I passed that stage. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. God shows up just about every time. Are you listening to me? Because why? I have, I have so much faith and trust in him that he will never fail his promises. Glory be to God. And the Holy Spirit just bring, brings it to pass. Amen. All right. And so Hebrews, Hebrews 13, Hebrews 13, 5 and, and 6. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Write it down and check it out. All right. All right. Faith is how to be free of worry. Faith is how to be free of worry. Well, pastor, so how do I stop be worried? I'm so worried about this situation. I'm so worried about this, uh, this problem. About what well, activate your faith. It will override the spirit of fear. It will override, overshadow the spirit of fear. I've told you time and time and again that fear is a liar. Fear comes to just lie to you and, and put all manner of things in your mind for you to think that it's impossible. But you see, fear will tell you that you are impossible, all right? But faith will tell you that I am possible. <laughs> Hallelujah. Fear tells you that it's impossible. You are impossible. And fear will tell you those things, but faith will tell you, I am possible. The same spelling. Same spelling. Flip it over. When the doctor says you're gonna, you're gonna, you 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 are you are diagnosed with this disease, well, or sickness, well, flip it over. Tell tell the sickness or tell the doctor, no, I am I am the opposite of what you say. Amen. I don't agree with what you're saying. And the fact that you are saying it and I don't agree don't mean that it's going to happen to me. Listen, I'm telling you something. See, the Bible says that if any two will touch and agree, any two, I am not in agreement with what you are saying concerning me. So it don't matter how, how long you want to continue to keep saying it, how long you want to keep broadcasting it, how long you want to keep advocating it, how long you want to keep dancing it, how long you want to keep making noise with it. I don't agree with you. I agree with what God has said concerning me. And that's what matters. I don't agree with you. I agree with God. If any two would touch and agree. I'm not agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with God. That is faith. Are you listening to me? Now, this I remember, I think this early part of this week, I sent a, test, uh, a message uh, all over the place, letting you know that don't, please don't misunderstand faith lifestyle to be arrogance. Don't misunderstand that. Faith only acts on the word of God. Faith acts on the word of God. And if I'm acting on the word of God and it's, it's uh, helping me, what do I care about what you're thinking? You can, you can think anything you want to think, praise God. That's your business. Now, if you want to, if you want to be free from worrying, then I'm telling you that faith is what you need. Your faith is what needs to be activated. All right. And so Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Now, faith also gives us confidence with God. All right? Faith gives us confidence with who? With God. 
Faith gives us confidence. Our confidence is not in the system of this world. Our confidence is not in the system of this world. Our confidence is in God. My confidence is not in you. My confidence is not in the government. My confidence is in God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. My confidence is in the promises of God. My confidence is in the promises of God. My confidence is in the word of God. My confidence is in God, the one who created me and knows everything concerning me, including the, the, the number of the hair on my head. Does the government know the number of the hair on your head? Does your mother and father know the number of the hair on your head? Does your husband and wife know the number of hair on your head? Does your sister's family, brothers and sisters, your sons, daughters, do they know? So why are you then listening to and yielding into this this you know what what is coming you know from 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 uh what god has said concerning you are you listening so this is very important beloved this is so so important for you to understand as a believer and as a child of god you live according to that which god has said you don't live according to the pro i mean to the to the dealings and, and the things of this world Jesus said that, remember, let me repeat that to you, beloved. Remember that Jesus said that the world do not know the Holy Spirit. The world do not know the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they cannot receive him and they cannot have him. But you do know the Holy Spirit. And that is why it's important for you to not just know of him, but know him personally, that you're going to walk with him, you're going to sleep with him, you're going to sit with him, you're going to eat with him, you're going to talk to him, you're going to have a chance. Listen, you got to engage the Holy Spirit like you have never done before in your life. Now, if you don't know about the Holy Spirit, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not secret. All right, because, well, you've not been, you've not been introduced to the Holy Spirit. Like in the in the in the days of the uh, the people in Ephesus, like I said earlier, Paul was asking them, "Have you people heard about the Holy Spirit? Have you received the Holy Spirit?" They said, "No, we have never heard about the Holy Spirit. We've never heard about the Holy Spirit. Well, we heard about Jesus, and we 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 you know the way He does things and all that. We believe that He is the Son of God. We believe in Him. We believe in His ministry. Yeah, but how about the Holy Spirit? Who came upon Him for Him to do all the things that He did for which you believe?" which now he has departed from this earth and has sent the Holy Spirit, the one who helped him to do all those things. You don't know him? So it's not, it's not surprising that a lot of believers don't know the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And we are going through life challenges every day like the unbelievers as well. I mean, I'm telling you, we're going through life challenge, life like unbelievers. Unbelievers are struggling and believers are struggling. Well, there has to be a distinction between us and the, and the world. Why? Because the world don't know who our Holy Spirit is. But we know who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is our helper, our divine helper. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The one who knows the things of God and, and even the deep things of God. Glory be to God, the Bible says in um, uh, um, Second Corinthians. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, and so our confidence... Our God, holy, the, the, our um, uh, uh, faith gives us confidence with God. Ephesians three, chapter twelve. Ephesians chapter twelve, verse three. Oh, sorry, forgive me. Ephesians chapter three, verse twelve. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Are you with me? Ephesians, Ephesians chapter three, verse twelve. I'm going to end here. All right. Our confidence is in faith. It, our faith gives us confidence. In God, glory be to God, hallelujah. Our and our confidence, of course, is in the promises of God. Praise God, amen. Our confidence is not in the in the in the world system, our confidence is in God through our faith, amen. And so, this is the word of God for you. Our confidence is in God through our faith. Praise God, are you with me? Are you with me? Beloved, our confidence, faith gives us confidence in God. And so don't misunderstand 
a faith lifestyle to be arrogant or to be cocky or all those things that you you may think that this person is no my confidence is in God because of the activation of my faith I activate my faith in God and I know that it the fact that it, I have not seen it yet doesn't mean that it ain't going to happen. Listen, don't worry about me. You go on with your life. You think that you are going ahead of me. Go ahead. Are you listening to me? Listen, let me repeat myself to you. I said this race, I don't know about any other race, but I'm talking about this race. This Christian race is not for the swift. It's not for those who talk fast and think that, it, you know, you have systems in place and all that. Listen, go and look at Proverbs chapter 2. Verse 10, I believe. Understanding will keep you. So be kept. Be kept. Instead of running fast. And get into a place where. Who said that the other day? He says. Um, it's, it's easy to win. But to maintain. To maintain that victory. To maintain. It's another thing. So take your time as long as you're on this earth. Are you listening? Just take your time. Live according to the word of God. By understanding the word of God. In preparing yourself for the coming of the Messiah. Glory be to God. But in the meantime, just enjoy your everyday life by understanding of the word of God. But you can only do that. You can only do that by accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's the first step you ought to take. Are you listening? That's the first step you ought to take. And then be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so if you don't know Jesus, if you, have not, if you don't and have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you have the opportunity to do that right now, even as I pray with you. All right? Just pray with, let me pray with you right now. Just pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you right now for giving me this opportunity to hear this word that has brought my belief and trust in you that indeed you died for me I am a sinner and I ask you to forgive me of my sins and now baptize me in the Holy Spirit that I may come to know that which is written of me and that I may fulfill it to the glory of your name I thank you Holy Spirit in Jesus name Amen now, if you have just said that prayer right now, what I what we call born again, you've been born again, spiritually born. Now, born again is a spiritual birth. Okay? It's spiritual birth. That is what it means. Alright? So you have your spirit is 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 been rebirthed. Okay, through Jesus Christ. Not anybody else. Through Jesus Christ. Now, if you have just done that. I want you to now take the next step. 